Well, I'm over the Sioux Lock, back in Canada. In a previous video, I had camped Lake Superior on the American side in Wisconsin. Now for a different perspective, I am en route to the Canadian side near Wawa, Ontario. Lake Superior. So I think you'd agree that's a really good location. Beautiful view right on the Great Lakes. Now, unfortunately, to get a first class view like that, it costs money and it wasn't cheap. I paid $42 Canadian plus tax, so it came out to $48.50. That's about $35 US. Is it worth it? That's what I'm gonna find out. The Agawa Bay Campground is located in Lake Superior Provincial Park, one of the largest provincial parks on Superior. Well, the good news is there's a tap right beside my campground. But the bad news is there's a boil water advisory. It's not safe to drink. Does that bother me? Not in the least. Now the reason I'm not too concerned about the water is, well, most of the places that I go, the water is not drinkable either, and so I'm kind of used to it. I've developed a system, and the first part of it is this collapsible bucket. It just opens up like that. It's got a hose in it, and it's got a hole on that end. Handle, just needs something to hang it off like that. But the most important part of this system is the filter. And this is the Rapid Pure Ceramic Filter. I know a lot of people like the, uh, the Sawyers or the Life Straw. However, they're very hard to dry and they do not freeze. This one you can freeze at least once and because I travel all year round, it's very important that I don't get a filter that's just gonna be destroyed if it gets below freezing. Now this one just unscrews like that and it's got two washers. Just take one off, grab the bucket and it goes right through like that. Washer on that side and then just screw it down. And there it goes. There's the filter, put it up like that. Hose goes on the end. Okay, hose is on. Clamp is clamped. Get my water. And pour it in. You just grab your favorite water bottle, and this is one I just picked up. Ozark Trail, unclamp it, and then you're ready to go. Clean, pure drinking water. I needed that. Now that I have water, I can explore. The first place I want to visit is the Agawa Bay Pictographs, just a few kilometers north of the camp. But before I headed out, the strangest thing happened. This little bird started attacking my Jeep. 
Either he preferred Toyotas, or he just didn't like the reflection of the guy in the mirror. But all he accomplished was giving himself a big headache. Although a very short walk, there are many interesting features to see along the way. There are many tricky spots of uneven terrain, so shoes with good gripping treads are a must. The view of Superior alone makes the trip worthwhile. For many people, this is the end of the trail. The display shows what lies beyond the warning sign. Now if you have the skills, the footwear, and Lake Superior is calm enough, you could at least make it to the first pictograph. According to the display, this depicts a fish and a mythical creature. You gotta be careful here. One slippery rock and you're gonna get a bath. But the next one really caught my eye. According to the display, it was a Miss Ship Has You at Canoe and Serpents. In Ojibwe culture, a Miss Ship Has You is a mythical being like a great water panther. However, I think it looks like a dinosaur. On the next one, I saw two smiley faces. But it was actually a horse, rider, and four spheres. Guess I'll go with the experts on that. From all the smoke of spring forest fires, the sun went down a ruby red. The next morning the sun was bright and the water was calm. So I set out to do what was too dangerous on the other side of the lake just a little while before. Well, that got deep really fast. I can still see the bottom out here, though. Super clear water. The water's really calm, but there are still swells. Just gotta get used to it. I never thought that in my whole life I would ever say that I kayaked Lake Superior. After having a lifelong phobia of water, this was a huge challenge for me. But after two years of kayaking, I don't have the anxieties I had before. I mean, yes, I can still fall in and drown, but it's not a fear. It's just reality. I have to be careful. 
and it's opened up so much as far as being able to travel and explore and see the world from a different perspective. It took courage, but I made progress and I really love it. I can't tell from here, but it looks like there's a, oh, there's a dog. It looks like there's a stream or a river ahead. I can't tell from this angle, but I guess I'm gonna find out. It is a stream, but I don't know if I can get up there. The current's a little high. Let me just see if I can paddle a little stronger. Okay, paddle hard. have to portage. Oh, that was cool. Whew. That was so quiet. I guess it's got a little too shallow. Gotta go back. <laughs> oh well. It was still kind of neat. Oh okay, there, now I'm off. Okay, well there's only so far I can go up that stream, but it's still kind of neat. I mean, there's so many things at this location. You can kayak Lake Superior and then go to a little stream. But now my ultimate challenge. A little bit of white watering. It's not really white water but to me it is. Oh boy, watch out for the rocks. Here we go, whoa! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well that wasn't that bad. <laughs> I love it. One of the most striking features of Northern Superior is where the waters meet the Great Canadian Shield. Oh, the patterns in the rocks. Look at that. Worms. Not real worms, of course, just the patterns of metamorphic rock known as gneiss. I agree, it is nice. That's <laughs> so cool. For a geologist, this must be paradise, as this continental mass is believed to be over two billion years old.
love the colors of the rocks. But I'd be curious as to what it is underwater. So I think I'm going to take the GoPro and stick it underneath. See what we get. I think that was a good introduction to my Lake Superior kayaking experience. However, I'd like to try my Lake Superior hiking experience as well. So I'm heading back. Well, I have to do at least one hike while I'm here. And the one I've chosen is the Pinguasibi, which is Ojibwe 4 River of Fine White Sand. It's about a three hour hike, about three kilometers, uh, you know, under two miles. Should be fun. Now this is a relatively easy trail, however it is rocky. It's not just gravel and so you got to be careful with your footing. Wear hiking boots, no crocs. There is one thing I should always be on guard for, but never am. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that one I got the spider and the web. But the bugs haven't been that bad. 
but it is a tag team between the black flies and the mosquitoes. And be careful where you step. So that's the end of the trail, but I just wanted to show you this massive growth on this tree. Look at the size of this thing. Monster. With all the waterfalls, it's hard to find a place where it's quiet to enjoy lunch. While observing nature, I'm always fascinated with patterns like pollen on the rocks or the many faces of fungi. I could admire these forever, but it was time to head back to camp. So keeping up with tradition, I never really prepare for a meal. I just use whatever I have. And tonight, I've got minute rice. I've got a package of Indian coconut curry by The Good Bean. Lots of protein there. And a snack pack of veggies and dip. Now the veggies and dip were for the road while I was driving, but I never used them. They're gonna go bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil up the veggies and I'm gonna use the dip as a sauce. And everything is gonna be heated in the pot. It's way too hot in there. I'm not cooking inside the camper. I'm cooking outdoors this time. So first thing, boil some water. Okay, the rice is all cooked, the veggies are all steamed, so it's time for the Indian coconut curry. Just tear that, on it goes. There. Okay, it's a, it's a little brown, so we'll spice it up with some fresh cherry tomatoes. And one bug, get out. Okay, now I don't know if this is a fork or a spoon meal. I'm gonna try it with a fork first. Hmm. 
it's not too spicy it's not too bad at all let's just see what a little hidden valley ranch dressing will do on the side if it is a little spicy that'll cool it off at least there it is creation for the night mmm oh I like it yeah the ranch dressing or the curry sauce doesn't matter take your pick okay success I like it Well, I've been well fed, I'm relaxed and rested, and it's a beautiful night. But I'm gonna be leaving in the morning, so I think it's time I gave my assessment of this particular campground. I'm at Agawa Bay camp Campground. There is 345 campsites here. This is Lake Superior Provincial Park, Ontario, Canada, and it's about an hour and a half away from Sault Ste. Marie. Location-wise, this just cannot be beat because it's right by Lake Superior, the most superior of the Great Lakes, the largest freshwater lake in the world. And it is freshwater, it's crystal clear. And right now it is super, super calm, which is perfect for kayaking, canoeing. Um, you can swim, but uh, it's June 1st, it's a little cold. Um, I did go in there just, you know, knee high, that was good enough for me. The beaches are nice, um, long beach, but they're a little bit more pebbly. So it's a place to set up an umbrella and a chair and just take it all in. Now, inside the, uh, the provincial park, there's at least a dozen hiking trails. And I, you know, I only went on one and it was beautiful. Whatever your level of expertise for uh, hiking, there's something here for you. Uh, the restrooms are well spaced, they even have uh, sinks to wash your hands, and there are hot showers here, which is another bonus. And there's even an exhibit, there's a store and a gallery, definitely worth checking out. So, is it worth almost $50 Canadian or $35 US? Well, that's a lot. That is a high price, but However, I mean, what you get here is phenomenal location. If there wasn't any trails and rivers and falls and wildlife, I'd say that was too much. Now, if you're a budget traveler, this is really expensive. What can I recommend? Well, there aren't any cheap places around here. And as far as boondocking goes, I didn't really find much of that either. There are some places to pull over near the highway, um, you know, enough for maybe a van or a car or a very, very small camper. But you're right by the highway and that was the problem. It would not be comfortable, especially with the amount of truck traffic you'd get at night. So if you can splurge for a night, go to somewhere like this, enjoy it, and then move on. But if you have the money, if you know almost $50 a night is no issue for you, spend a week. you love it. There's so much to see here. It's expensive, but it is beautiful. Well, I really enjoyed my stay here, but now that the bugs are out, I think it's time I headed east. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. And if you'd like a notice of my next video, please hit subscribe. Happy travels, everyone.